Now we're going to start the filing process. What filing basically is, is simply removing stock from the foam. This is a coarse brass. This is the uh, first one I showed you when we started on the video. This is a half round, as you can see, the profile. We're gonna start with the flat side. It's a good idea on these to have a handle on them. I feel I have better feel when I'm actually carving if I'm holding it right like this. If you have a handle, it might be a little bit safer right here, but this is how I actually hold it. I want a firm hold on this as I'm carving. Keep in mind, as this is hitting the foam, you always wanna follow in and follow out with your strokes. You don't wanna just be in one area concentrating like this, unless it's maybe by the vent area. It should always be even flowing strokes. If you need to be higher in one area, then you let off a little bit of pressure and you can roll in. Otherwise, you're gonna have dips and depressions. You do not want that. That's the hallmark of good fish taxidermy is a nice, clean, smooth body with no dips. To start out, we're going to flatten down the top profile, the belly, the back, and then the show side. We're not gonna to try to round at this point. We're just gonna flatten this out and level it out. We don't wanna take off a lot of stock here. We're just getting rid of this choppiness area through here, through all this, just so we have an even playing field when we do start to round. So here's how I actually hold it. With my left hand, I grab right at the uh, caudal peduncle region, just onto the body, right between the uh, anal fin and the soft dorsal, right like this. I hold it against myself, right by my sternum. I press it into myself, holding it firmly. I want the file to be doing the work. I don't want to move the fish with the file. I have it at an angle. If you have it like this, it'll cut. If you have it like this, it's not going to cut. So I have it at a slight angle like this, so I have a good cut across the foam. I start with nice, even strokes. Again, I just flatten this area out and got rid of all the distortions. Now I'm gonna do the same in this region. Right like that. That's been leveled out. Now we're gonna flip it, holding it in the same position so we don't break it. That's the big thing. We don't wanna break up here. We don't wanna break here. We don't wanna break off this delicate area here because it's thinner. So I'm, I'm holding it firmly so I'm not breaking it. Okay, this is the belly. See how the foam is positioned in conjunction to the rasp. With this kind of foam, you're also cutting on the back stroke and the forward stroke, especially when you have a heavy rasp like this. So you're cutting both ways. A lot of times if you're doing metal work, you'd only be cutting going forward. That's not the case here, so you have to be mindful of that as you're carving. And that's why I'm not actually lifting the file off, because I'm actually doing two cuts in one. Okay, now we're at the, where the belly starts and the anal fin begins, and we're just going to smooth that out. We're just smoothing it out right now. Not trying to take off too much stock. Now we're going to flip over and we're going to do the back side. Exact same procedure. We're just going to level this whole thing out where it looks choppy and wavy. I'm going to hold it against myself, hand positioned here. Not concerned about rounding at this point, just leveling up. Okay, we get near the tail. Just starting to bring that forward a little bit, as you can see right there. We have the back side completely leveled off now. It's gonna make it much easier. I'm just gonna take a little bit more off right here. You want everything to be level. If you see throughout this whole process, we don't want any big dips or deviations. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the show side. What you're looking at here is the rise where the gut of the fish is going to be. We wanna keep this area slightly rose up. We don't want this to be flattened down. But we do wanna to start to curve up as we move to the top of the fish. So keep that in mind as we level this off. We don't want to put too much pressure, take too much foam off at this belly area at this time. Just a little bit. Okay, we have it leveled off. We kept this area like it is. We did not take any extra stock off of this belly rise right here. We don't need to do that yet. We can do that as we start to round it in. 
we have a little bit of a chop right here where the belly ends and the anal starts. So we're just gonna clean that up a little bit. Remember, we want a nice full belly. So at this point, we can actually start to round the fish into what a largemouth bass would look like. We have a good profile going everywhere, but you can see we have these lines here, and those are our initial cut lines yet. We need to get it rounded off so it actually looks like our bass, which is rounded. Kind of a low, low. When you're carving, you never wanna have any sharp lines like this. They're gonna show up in your finished mount. It's gonna show up just as the line, and the scales are gonna buckle along that line. It does not look professional. I always like to start at the top of the fish. And again, I'm gonna hold it here by the anal fin, push it against myself. I'm going at an angle and I'm hitting that line. I'm gonna do the same on the back side, the same line. You see how I do it with some little short strokes here? You can come in and do that. What you wouldn't wanna do is do this and then come off and start digging a hole in here. You want everything to be even together. This is the caudal peduncle region. We're gonna to start to round that in. As you can see, there's a sharp edge there. Well, I'm gonna get my file like this. I'm still using the flat part of it. Just start to round that. I don't wanna to get too thin here yet. This particular region of the tail does not V up. It does V up just a little, and then it kind of rounds in. You don't wanna get this too sharp right here. It should be fairly thick where my fingers are and then come up to a, a very slight point. It should be flat to about here and that point should actually be here. That's where the caudal peduncle ends and the actual caudal or tail fin begins. That's always thinner right here where my fingers are. So we're just gonna start to shape that in a little bit. I'm gonna flip it over, same on the bottom side of the fish. Again, fairly flat here is good, but we wanna slightly round it. Okay, here's this region. So we're going to thin this right where the caudal peduncle ends and the tail begins on the bottom side of the fish. We're starting to bring it forward now as it's, this whole area of the fish thins down. It stays fairly thick where my fingers are here. As we go towards the end, it starts to thin down and it thins down equally on both sides. We can thin it down a little bit more on the back side, and it'll give us a little bit more tail out. But at this particular profile point, it starts to go in a little bit. So I'm just thinning it on the back side, forward. Same on the show side. Again, I'm not taking extra stock off here at this point. I'm just taking it off at the end of the caudal peduncle, right where it meets the tail. At this time, we can see that we're a little thick right here, and I'm actually gonna take some stock off from this lower point. And what that basically does is that brings the tail up a little bit more. Not that we want a lot of tail up, but that'll actually do that. You can also get more curve up if you carve right in this region here a little bit. Again, the soft dorsal stops here, so you're safe to carve in here where my finger is. I'm gonna carve a little bit in there. Now we're gonna move down and start working on the belly. I don't need to, I don't wanna finish this region yet. I will come back and finish that after I get this more in line where I want it. You never wanna finish one spot complete when you still have an area on the bass like this that's very rough yet. So we're gonna start on the gut. To do that, I'm gonna push it against myself. I'm gonna start on the flat of the gut again. A couple of passes. Then I'm gonna to start to work my file towards the show side, because this is the show side of the fish. I'm just rounding as I go. Not trying to take off a ton of stock here. If you take too much off, you're gonna have a thin gut. We do not want that. I'm in the center of the fish. I'm just blending that last procedure in right up to the top. You can see how we're starting to get a bassy look down here now. 
I'm going to do the same with the back side of the fish. So I'm going to turn it around. Again, you can see our line here. We need to get rid of. We need to round this line where my finger's on. Yeah, I'm going to start on the flat of the gut. I'm just going to make sure that everything is rounding in both ways correctly. You can see when I start, when I do some little movements, I'm just cleaning up an area where it's just a little high, and it was just a little bit high right there. Okay, you can see it's starting to look like a bass now, but we have some more work to do. We need to shape the belly or gut on the fish. This area here should actually be dipping in further to accent this whole area. So I'm going to take it again, push it against myself. Again, this is the anal fin. I'm going to round that down a little bit to give it that lobe look we talked about earlier. Do the same on the back side. And by doing that, I'm starting to shape the belly of the bass, making it look like a pouchy look right there and accenting it. I'm coming into this area now. This is the tail sweep out and I'm just taking some stock off. When I take stock off of this area, I'm getting more tail out. If I take it off the back side, I lose the tail out and it straightens it. You can see that profile. I'm going to come in at the very top of my tail and just take a little bit more of that off. So I'm starting to accent everything. Now I'm going to hold it and work on the back side of the fish a little bit more. Again, it's a little choppy back here. I'm gonna clean it up. Just bringing that tail out a little more so it's not so stocky on the end. If you look at our soft dorsal, we're still too stocky right here. It needs to lobe in a little bit more right here, not here. Not where my fingers are here, but right here. We need to get it lobed in at this section. So I'm going to go ahead and get that lobed in. Now's a good time to just kind of stand back and look at your work to see kind of where we're at. We have the basic filing completed. We have some more touch-up work to do, but the basic profile of this bass is complete. We look at the top and we want to make sure that we're not too thick. We are a little thick right back here. We're going to have to take a little stock off there. Smooth this in up here. The belly of our bass. You can see we have a really good thickness here. We're actually very close to what the actual bass was. And I'm actually going to grab the bass now. If you can see that, we're very, very close. And we actually were a little bit bigger on our body and that's perfect because we want a little bit of stretch there. We can make this bass look a little bit bigger. You can see there. Also, if you look at the um, anal fin, we have that very close to how that looks. You can see how it kind of lobes into it. And if you look closely at the tail area, you can see we're getting very close there. We're a little big and a little thick by the tail yet. We're gonna do a little bit more work there. Up at the top by the uh, throat latch, you can see that we're getting it very close to how it should look. Just a little touch up. And we do have to carve our notch in yet for the actual pelvic fins. And that'll actually accent the gut a little bit more. So I'm gonna put the bass back down and we are going to clean up those few areas. We're going to start by thinning the tail down a little bit more. So I'm gonna start on the show side. And I'm I'm going to take some stock off here. Again, if you carve too much out on the end of the tail here, you're going to start to straighten the fish out. We want to keep our nice curve we have in the fish. As you can see here, we have a nice sweep out with the tail. We want to keep that. I'm going to turn it around now and work on the back side. Again, see how I'm holding the file. As I bring this out to the end, I'm bringing the tail out more. I'm keeping that curve. I'm always thinking as I'm carving this bass, 
I want that curve out. I'm never going to get rid of that curve that's out. Okay, now I'm on the back of the fish again. We, if you remember, here we were a little thick, so I'm going to take that off now. Now I'm just kind of rounding up into the top. I'm keeping this lobey look here. I do not want to get it too flat, and I don't want to get it too pointed. You don't want it to look like a spawning salmon where it's super pointed up here. We want to keep it just lobing up. Just round this top of this head down slightly. We don't need it to be straight out. If you remember, we kept this wide here because the mouth is open. If this was a closed mouth bass, then this would be at this profile right here where my fingers are. I'm back on the show side again and I'm just cleaning up the front a little bit. I want to keep a nice gradual curve to the fish here on the show side. I do not want this to be flat. You will see some bass bodies that are flat here and they might look flat when the bass is laying on your workbench, but when the bass is actually swimming in the water, everything here is more rounded and the fish is a little bit more compacted. So that's something to keep in mind when you're carving. If you really want to get natural with your bass poses. We're still a little thick right here. Now this again is where the soft dorsal ends. We're going to take some stock off right where my finger is. We're just going to cut in right there. You can see that. Now we're keeping this fairly flat here, but we need to round it in on both sides. Again, I'm just following through with everything I'm doing, as you can see. I want to make sure that I keep this straight here the whole time. Same underneath, I'm going to take a little more stock off and then just round that in. And I'm going to bring it a little more forward. This is the back of the fish. I'm going to take my file, I'm just going to pull this forward a little more. I like to look at it like this a lot. I'm always holding it out in front of me to see just what it's looking like. And we're getting very close now. Take a little bit more off that tail. I want to try to match up with the tail on the bass. I'm always thinking, what is that bass actually looking like? And that's the beauty of actually having the bass on the table here. You can continuously be looking at that tail and matching it up with your form and saying, okay, I need to do a little bit more work there. Just from looking at the profile of these two, we are a little thick right through this region and we might as well just get rid of that right now. We're going to be taking the stock mostly off of this top portion here. I'm going to turn on so you can see this show side. And this is that soft dorsal. We're a little heavy right there. So I'm going to take some stock off. And I'm doing that by just carving straight across it. And then I start to just angle it in. Remember, this area is more V'd than up here. So we can, after we have that stock removed, we can start V'ing that area in a little bit more. Again, we're in this notch again, taking a little more stock off to match it up. Again, I take a quick look at it and we are getting it very close. We're a little heavy right here on the bass. There's a little hump right there. So we're just gonna get rid of that with our file. We look in here, we got a nice sweep yet. It sweeps up to here and then see how it just curves into here. That's what you want. You don't want to see this flat going in here. You want to see a little bit of a hump right here. And if you look at the musculature on the bass, you'll see that little hump start and stop. It's very important that's carved in and really can make for a nice mount. But as you're looking at it now, we're still a little thick on the tail here. So we're going to take some stock off on the back side. We have plenty of sweep here. We can easily do that. You can see how this heavy rasp file makes real short work of taking foam off on these fish. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll take off too much stock. So if you really get fast at this and you get into the motion with it, you can have a bass like this carved very quickly. 
Now I'm just rounding up that soft dorsal again because I'm pretty sure I have it very close to what I want. I'm just kind of blending it all in. Take a little more stock off the bottom part of this tail. We're just a little wide here on the actual tail part. And then I'm just blending in where I took it off. If I take some off, I've got to round it to blend it in. Okay, you can see where we're at. Uh, I need to do a little more shaping here at the belly area. I'm going to take the round part of the file now. I'm going to go right in here. Now this area is where the vent stops and the anal fin starts. And I'm going to just cut in here a little bit with it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just shaping that gut, making it look as big as possible. Even bigger than it really was, that's okay. Customer's not going to complain about that. They will complain if you have a flat belly, large mouth. That's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm also going to accent the gut by carving in here, right at this point. Then I move up as I do that, and I come up to here. So I'm kind of leaving this belly area. I'm not carving a lot in this whole thing. I don't want to take too much stock here. I do have a slight little line here yet, though, so I'm just going to come through with my file and get rid of that. Then I'm just coming back in here again. Accenting that whole area. Same on the back side of the fish. This is the back side where my file is hitting. Do the same thing there. Rounding it in. You want nice smooth transitions. Shaping the back side of the belly now. It had a few little lumps and humps there. A few lines I had to get rid of. This is at the throat latch. I'm just thinning that down a little bit. This should be quite thin as it goes out to here. Bringing this in a little bit this way. And that is the height from here to here. I could just bring it in so it has a nice sweep up and in. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this area up a little bit more right here. Now if you recall, when we open the mouth up on the large mouth, the gills and the esophagus are going to be pressing against this part. So if this is opened up enough here, you have plenty of room for a nice open mouth bass. If it was a closed mouth bass, we could keep it just like it looks. But we need to open this up a little more right through here. So I'm going to use the round part of the file. Holding it like this. I'm just going to carve straight down and open it up. Move up to the top a little bit. Just kind of keeping everything nice and even. If you look straight on here at this profile, we have it very close, these two lining up. I could use a little bit of filing this way just to level it up with the top. So I'm gonna do that now. Even though this thing has a curve out, this should never be curved straight out. It should always come to a curved top point here and then go back in a little bit. You just keep turning it and lining it up. Now I'm gonna take my file and I'm going to take this sharp edge off of this curved in part on the form. So it's at this angle here. I'm going to take the end of my file here, the round part, I'm going to make a spot for the clethrium bone to sit. If you remember, we took that clethrium bone measurement from the end of the caudal peduncle to the clethrium. That clethrium bone is going to stay with the skin mount after we have it flushed. So I need to have some place to set that in. Even though we thin it down from the back side, if you don't have an area for it to sit in, it'll rise up and cause your skin to actually buckle when it's trying to dry. So we're gonna carve a little depression for that. This depression will actually be filled with mache when we get to the mounting process. You don't have to get overly fancy with this. Just a nice little depression. It can be easily adjusted later. If you can look, our bass body is really coming along now. It's really starting to look like a bass. Now we're going to go around with our course file one more time. We're just going to look for any areas where there's any deviations or something isn't smoothing in. And to do that, I hold it up in the light and I look for any area that has a dip in it. You can see we have a nice lobe here where the gut is. That's what you want to see. That's good. And then it sweeps in here nicely and out to the tail. You keep some of your curve here, but it just starts to go in a little bit here. And at the top profile, you'll see the same thing, but a little bit less of that actual buckle up. Because remember, we're a little thinner on the top than we are on the gut. 
So Sam, we're just gonna circle the whole fish now, making sure we have everything pretty much in line. It looks like we really do here. Uh, there's not much else to do. I'm just gonna thin this a little right here at the top of the head. I'm gonna grab the bass and show you that. You can see how it's almost an exact replication there. We still have a little extra stock right where my thumb is, and we can take that off if we need to when we do our actual finishing girth measurements. So we're just gonna go around and uh, clean up any areas that don't flow together. Remember, carving is all about having your piece flow together. You don't want abrupt starts and stops, except here, which is at the end of the vent. At this point, the bass body is almost completed. But before we go any further, we need to take another girth measurement just to see where we're at. If you recall, the exact girth on the fish is 13 and 3 quarters. We want to come in an inch bigger than that because of skin stretch. We're going to do a quick check on our girth. Again, this is right where the pectoral fins would be. And right now we're at about 16 and we want to be coming in at about 15. 14 three quarters to 15, so we're about an inch big, which is perfect at this point. We need to come down about a half an inch with our coarse file, and almost all of that can be done on the back side of the fish, where we remembered when we looked at it, it looked like it was a little heavy right here. We can easily take that down there, and we can actually probably shorten it up a little bit more from this direction from the top. We're gonna to take a quick measurement on that. The final half inch will be all done with the fine file and our sandpaper. But we need to take a couple more quick measurements. We're going to start by taking a measurement of the thickness of the fish. If you recall, that is two and three quarters. So we're gonna take a quick measurement of that. Using our calipers. Okay, right now we are at about three inches, the three and a quarter inch. So we're actually very close on that. If you recall, we want to keep things a little bigger. So we can still come in on the back side of our fish to bring our girth down and still be safe. We also want to check the height of the body, which if you look up here on our board, that measurement is five and a half. As you can see, it's really important to have a table set up next to you when you're carving. You can lay out all your tools. It really makes it easy. So we're actually at six and a half. So we're a whole inch tall, taller than the actual fish is, which is good at this point. But what it tells me is I can come down at least a half an inch to almost a full inch on this height. And that's actually gonna lower our girth down to where we need it to be. I'm gonna take a couple of other quick measurements. We're going to measure the distance of the peduncle, and we're actually going to use our calipers that's already preset for that. And we're very close, as you can see there. It's just that I can't get it on there. So we just need to come down a little bit. I wouldn't do too much more filing with the coarse file here, maybe a little. Our other file and our sandpaper will bring it down to the correct uh, thickness right there. I'm going to check the width at the clethrium bones, which is right here and that is three inches. So we'll see where we're at. We're at three and a half. So again, that goes along with this fish being just a little thick this way yet. And we can take the clethrium to tail measurement again, just to be sure, even though I'm, I know we're going to be okay with that. And that's measured from here to where the clethrium bone would be, and that's 11 and a half, as you can see there. So we're safe there. So basically we need to come down about a half an inch on this body, and we're gonna do it in two places. We're going to do it on the top of the fish, making the fish just a little bit 
um, not as tall. And that's okay because when this fish is in the water, it's not as flattened out or as tall as you see here. And we have to also recall that when we made our tracing, we made it a little bit big to begin with. And that's why we have plenty of room to work with now to bring that down a little bit more. And then we're gonna thin it down a little bit on the back side of the fish. Not too much here, just a little bit. We don't need any more down on the actual show side. We look at this profile. We have a nice flat sweep here. We don't have to do anything there. We'll take a little bit off on the back side right here where my finger is. It looks like it needs just a little bit there. So again, I'm gonna hold the fish in this region, the caudal peduncle region. Take my file, press it against myself, and take some off the top of the fish. I'm gonna avoid taking any off this soft dorsal because I wanna keep this soft dorsal rise. Now you're looking at the back of the fish here. This soft dorsal rise has to stay there. That's what's gonna give it a compact bassy look. Just taking it off this front half. I'm basically stopping where the soft dorsal would begin with my file, right here. I'm taking off roughly an eighth to a quarter inch of material straight down with this particular step. And as you can see, I'm holding this against me. I do that for stability. If I try to file out in midair, you're gonna have this kind of a motion. You're not gonna have any stability. You're gonna have walking, which means you're gonna have lines in here that are gonna turn into dips, which you're not gonna be able to get rid of. So I've taken about enough off the top here. And you can see I have a little lobe going up here. I need to get rid of that. Put it back against myself and just file that in. And remember, smooth transitions. So again, I'm gonna hold it out and look at it. I'm getting very close to the look I want. You can see where I'm at, but I do have my lines now because I just took some more stock off. So I'm gonna put it back against myself and get rid of those lines on both sides. Again, working on the soft dorsal a little bit. I'm just making sure that that lobes up there correctly. Taking a little bit more stock off of our sweep out with our tail, right in the center here. Making sure everything transitions in. You can see we're getting very close now. On the very end of this, I'm just rounding a little bit. That's gonna allow for the bones that are in the head of the bass, which are gonna stay in there. A few of the bones right at this point where the scales stop and the head starts, they can actually sit on the form right there. I'm gonna work on the back side a little. If you recall, we were a little thick on the back. We can actually take some stock off safely. And I'm gonna just thin this down here and bring this in. There's plenty of room for our, our gills to lay right against this. And you'll see why when we mount that, why I do that. But I'm gonna hold it against myself and start removing some of that stock. Okay, I'm gonna remove that stock here and just bring this in. When I'm doing this, I'm not gonna get it too thin up on the top part. I'm just thinning it through here. Same down here on the throat latch area. Now looking again at our profile, you can see that we're just a little thick right here, going up in here, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm looking, I'm always looking everywhere on this as I'm working, just to see exactly where I'm at, make sure everything's flowing together. You never want to stop in one spot and start having dips or depressions. It's harder to get out. So you, you turn in a lot of different lights. You see we have a slight little dip right here. So I'm going to file now right here in front of it, just to get rid of that, just a little bit. I'm not going to file in that depression, it's just going to make it worse. It's just right here I filed. And then you look at the show side again, just to continuously see exactly where you're at. And we're getting very close. It might be 
just a little bit of rounding needed right up here at this top part. I'm just gonna start on the show side and work my way in. I get that lobe look. Work on the back side the same way a little bit. If we look at our bass body, it's coming along really good. We do need to thin down just a little bit right through in here. Maybe a touch here yet, right where my finger is, right here. Okay, we do that right here. This is, again, the anal fin stops and the caudal peduncle begins right here. I'm just thinning it down a little bit. I'm just rounding that off now because you remember, I just flattened it, so I need to round that off. Remembering it thins down here where the caudal peduncle ends and the tail begins. You can see on my, I'm not taking off as much material at this point. I'm just slowly taking off a little bit at a time because we're getting very close to being finished. We're just a little bit thicker than I want to be right at this point. Now this is the belly of the fish, so I'm going to take a little bit off of the back side right where my hands are right here. check our alignment to make sure that the throat latch here is lining up correctly with the top of the fish, and it is. It's okay if it's just slightly forward, that's okay. Take a, just a little bit off of there. Again, I'm gonna check it, make sure everything's looking good this way. I don't see any dips or depressions. The tail is looking good. I could probably thin it just a little more right here. I'm gonna take care of that now. You can see our profile on our tail now. We're, we're fairly thin and that's good for this point. We'll thin it down a little more with our other files, but that's about what you want. You can also look at the top profile. You're seeing we have that very close to being correct. I'm just gonna round this in a little here. We wouldn't wanna go any thinner than we have it here. I'm actually gonna just bring it in a little bit. It's a little long up there. You can see what I just did. I'm going to make that little notch for that head bone I talked about. Yeah, we almost have the rough filing complete. What I'm going to do now is make the pectoral um, notch, which is right here. The pectoral fin is right by the clethrium bone. You can see that here. Should be a little notch made right there. I'm just going to take care of that. It'll actually sit right in there then in this a little bit of foam that's still sitting here will act as the muscle detail that's right there. I also need to make my pelvic fin notch. Now, if you recall, when we did our tracing, the pelvic fins actually sucked in a little bit into the body. So I'm gonna grab my initial tracing. I'm gonna set it back on. And as you can see, we have pretty much a, a perfect replication. You don't see foam behind it. And you look this way, you don't see much paper. So we're very close to what we actually did. But we need to line up our pectoral fins, which were there, and our pelvic fins, which were right by this mark here. So we do have the pectoral fins lined up right where my finger is, we did that correct. Now we're gonna do the pelvic fin lineup. So I'm gonna make a little notch in the form so I know where I'm at, right there. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be right where that notch is, we're just gonna carve the foam in a little bit that's going to give a little notch for those fins to set up in. It's actually going to help to accent the gut a little bit more. So I'm going to turn it around like this, press the form against myself, and then just start making that notch. You don't want to go too much with this notch. You can always make more later. It's relatively flat here when you make this notch. It's not curved in. You want to keep the flatness of the belly that continues through here. 
it's one of those things you do a little bit and then you kind of hold it up again and you look at it and that's about what we want just a, a little bit of a notch there we can always accent more if we need to if you look here i have a little bit more stock than i want because this is an open mouth bass i need a lot of room there so i'm going to take the round part of my file I'm going to take a little bit more stock off right here. Straighten that out a little bit. And we basically have the bass body complete. We're now ready to go in with our fine files. One thing I'm going to do just looking at it, I do have a little bit of a raise right there. I'm going to get rid of that. Check our other profiles. Everything's looking good. There's a little bit of a line right here. I just need to blend in. A little bit of a line here. You can actually feel over the bass as you're working on it. And you can feel if there's anything that isn't right. If you, you get to a spot and it feels like there's a, a sharp line, you can blend that in. Um, also, as you're carving, you can listen to the file. The file is actually talking to you as you're carving and if it's hitting different areas you'll know it. You have a certain sound throughout the whole thing and if it deviates a little bit you know hey I've got an area here that's slightly flattened out and then it'll actually tell you you need to spend a little bit more time right there. Look at the top profile. We're good there. We have an exact match up with the bass. I'm going to angle this a little bit more on this tail and round it. I check it from this way like this. Check it from this way, looking down on it. Make sure that our anal fin has the right amount of dip and drop. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna notch this out a little bit more right here where the vent stops and the anal fin starts to accent that belly just a little bit more. Okay, now we can go on to our fine filing. 